Good day everyone, this is Teacher Joy Maria Saluna and today I'm going to discuss to you about a Module 2, Separating Mixtures. Materials in a mixture can be separated. There are some mixtures that are easy to separate and there are some that is hard to separate. Suppose you have a mixture in marbles and coins in a jar. It is easy for you to separate the marbles from the coins in the jar. Also, it is easy to separate small stones from rice grains in a bilao. On the other hand, you cannot simply pick salt from a salt solution. It is hard to separate components of an ink. Different techniques or methods of separating the components of mixtures are being used in many studies or experiments. Separating the components of a mixture is done to make each material or substance more useful. Methods of separating mixtures Decantation This method of separating the components of a suspension allows the heavy particles in a mixture to settle at the bottom of the container. This will make it possible for the clear liquid to be poured into a separate container. Evaporation For a solution made up of a soluble solid in a liquid, the process of evaporation can be an effective method of separation. If you recall, evaporation is the process of transforming a liquid into a gas. When the liquid evaporates, it leaves behind the solid components of the solution. Filtration A mixture of liquid and tiny particles of solid which have not been dissolved can be separated through filtration. A filter paper or cheesecloth is used to separate the suspended particles from the liquid. It has tiny pores where the liquid part of the mixture can pass through. The solid particles that are left behind are called residue. While the liquid or the water that passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate. A clean piece of cloth can also be used if filter paper is not available. Sieving or sifting. This technique is done by using a device to separate different sizes of materials. The material is subjected to a mechanical force of vertical and horizontal movement. With the help of container of mesh or perforated bottom through which the material is shaken or poured. Sieving or sifting defined as allowing mixture to pass through a sorting device like a screen. To sort or separate the cores from the fine particles or to break up lumps as a flour. A sieve, sifter, or a strainer used for sifting flour has very small holes. Coarse particles are separated or broken up by grinding against one another and against screen openings. Depending upon the types of particles to be separated, sieves with different types of holes are used. Use of magnet, a technique used to separate a mixture of magnetic or metallic or non-magnetic, non-metallic materials by using magnets. Use of magnets. Let's take note. A mixture of magnetic and non-magnetic materials can be separated by using magnets. When iron fillings are mixed with sand in a container, they form a mixture 
but they keep their original properties. The iron remains magnetic, while sand stays non-magnetic. When a piece of magnet is placed over the mixture and moved about, the iron fillings are attached to the magnet, leaving the sand on the container. Hand picking. Some substances are easily separatable just by taking out the impurities with your hand. This method of separation is known as hand picking. Hand picking cores and mixtures like coins can be easily separated by manual separation. Just like what you did on the previous activity. Bigger components can be picked up. Manual separation is the method used for sorting different substances in a coarse mixture. Toys of different sizes, rocks, and soil can be easily separated through hand picking. Eggs of different sizes can also be separated using manual separation or hand picking. However, if the mixture is of a bigger volume, this can take a longer time. Flotation. This method is used to separate substances with different densities in a liquid by letting less dense substances float. You can easily separate the floating particles. Flotation works for things that are less dense than the other substance in a mixture. To separate substances by flotation, pour water or any liquid in the container. The more dense a water will make less dense substances float. One good example of flotation is when rice has floats when you put water to wash your rice before cooking another example is pencil shavings on the water distillation it is a method of separating the solvent from a solution for example water can be separated from salt solution by simple distillation this method works because water has a much lower boiling point than salt. When the solution is heated, the water evaporates. It is then cooled and condensed into a separate container. The salt does not evaporate and so it stays behind. Note, every substance has its own particular melting point and boiling point one way to check the purity of the separated liquid is to measure its boiling point for example your water boils at 100 degrees celsius if it contains any dissolved solids its boiling point will be higher than this Water evaporates and its vapors rise. The water vapor passes into the condenser, where it cools and condenses. Liquid water drifts into a beaker. All the water has evaporated from the salt solution, leaving the salt behind. Winnowing It is the method of separating mixture in which heavier components of the mixture are separated from the lighter components with the help of the wind. Winnowing is another way to separate the mixtures. It is used to separate heavier and lighter components of a mixture by wind or by blowing air. This method is commonly used by farmers to separate lighter husk particles from heavier seeds of grain. It is the process of freeing grain from the lighter particles or impurities like shaft, dirt, or etc. 
by throwing it into the air and allowing the wind or a force current of air to blow. Blow away impurities. Winnower is a tool used in this process of separating mixture called winnowing. Chromatography. A technique that separates the components of the mixtures based on the ability of each component to be drawn across the surface of another material. Chromatography. One method of separating mixtures is chromatography. Chromatography is a use when only very small amounts of the mixture are available. It is based on the varying degrees of attraction the different components of the mixture have for the solvent. In the preceding activity, you use a paper chromatography with alcohol as the solvent. The component dyes of the ink are attached to alcohol in varying degrees. They move along with the alcohol as it moves out the paper. The stronger the attraction of dye to alcohol, the farther it travels up the paper. The spots are found at different distances from the starting line. Ink is a mixture of different dyes. The identities of these dyes can be determined by using a separation method through paper chromatography. After the piece of paper was left in the jar for some time, colors developed along a line extending from the original block spot. The colors are spread out at different distances from the original spot. The colors produced from the block spot are blue, red, yellow, and violet. These colors are the dyes present in the ink. When the mixture is left untouched for some time, the solute slowly settles at the bottom. This process in which a dissolved solute settling down at the bottom of the container is called sedimentation. After this, the solvent can be slowly poured into another container without disturbing the settled particles, thus separating the solvent and the particles completely. This transfer of a liquid is called decantation. The solid that remains is called precipitate. Heating. This technique is used to separate the soluble solids from the solution. Just like in our experiment, when the salt solution is heated, water evaporates and salt remains in the container. The remaining residue is the solute. This also happens when patis or fish sauce is heated or left in an open container in a warm room. Grains of salt remain in the container as the liquid evaporates. Remember that in evaporation, only the solute is recovered, not the solvent.